Hello everyone, welcome to the test footage for Roasty's Restoration. Uh, on the bench today, we have a PlayStation 2 DualShock 2 controller. Uh, this is part of a purchase lot from eBay um, of probably, I don't know, about 25 or so uh, claimed defective uh, DualShock 2 controllers uh, just listed for parts or repair. Uh, there's no individual information on uh, each controller uh, as to what's wrong with it. Uh, so it's really going to be up to us to figure out what's going on and uh, if it's even worth repairing or if it's just something to throw in the parts bin. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the best place to start in these cases is uh, simply picking them up, feeling the buttons, feeling if anything is stuck. Um, is there anything just patently obvious uh, about it. Uh, and in this case, there really isn't. There's no cracked case. Um, there is a little bit of a gap right here that makes me wonder if this has been opened up before. Um, but that's not too, too disturbing. Everything else looks to be in pretty good physical condition. Uh, so we will have to um, go ahead and just jump to the next step. And that's hooking it up to some sort of system to test the buttons and truly the buttons is where uh, the, the, the typical problems with these controllers is. Um, PlayStation 2 controllers in particular have a history of failing simply due to age. So I'm betting that's what's going on with this one. So let's take a look. Um, a, a really good tool for scenarios like this is a USB adapter for uh, hooking these types of vintage controllers up to your computer so you can do proper testing on that and not have to be uh, stuck to any particular game system to test. That's very cumbersome and we want to avoid that. So let's go ahead and hook this one up to our PC and take a look. All right. So you'll see that we are on gamepadtester.com. It's a free little website that will detect any uh, any USB or otherwise connected uh, game controllers to your PC and just let you test out the full range of what they can do. Just and it is just just tremendous uh, in helping diagnose what's going on with uh, defective controllers. So without any further discussion on that. Let's take a look and see how this one is performing. Left analog looks good. Right analog also looks good. Yep. The four buttons on the right, they all look good. R1, R2 looks good. Mmm, down button doesn't work. Looks like right button does. Up does not, left does not, and L1 and L2. So the whole left hand side of this direction pad and and the L shoulder buttons both fail. Uh, and start and select, those both work. So, okay, so we have a pretty good idea of what, uh, what's going on here. This is a button problem and uh, We'll uh, jump away from this website here and get into the controller. Hang on just a sec. All right. Gonna unhook that from the PC. We're done with that for now. break into it. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here and fast forward. No one wants to see me unscrew a controller. Okay, and we are back. We've got most of these screws out or loose enough. Okay, 
we're just going to leave those screws in there. And because it's me, I know I'll lose the screws. So we'll put those in the project box. All right. We do have one more screw here in the PCB. And that looks to be the same size as the other ones, so I don't need to keep that separate. Really, the inside of this controller is pretty clean. This looks like it was treated pretty well in its time. So I'm wondering if this is just one of those controllers that aged out. And we'll get to what I mean by that here in a moment. So on this controller, instead of a PCB being right here, and the, uh, the pads having a connection on a, on a solid PCB board, like, I'll give you an example here. Give me just a second. Like this junk uh, controller board here, you can see it's on a solid board, and this is where the button connections would make, right here. These are not going to fail. This is a printed circuit board, and the worst thing that could happen here is corrosion, and that's easily solved. Uh, but what we don't we don't have that going on here. We have this um, this controller is just designed differently. Um, this is, you know, for the record. Now I. Terrible camera is not going to be able to pick this up, but if you're working on a PlayStation 2 controller, you can look right here on the back. And yeah, I'm not going to be able to get that to focus, but uh, that says H. And that means that uh, it, H is one of the three manufacturer codes that Sony outsourced these uh, DualShock 2 controllers to. So H, oh boy, um, I think that was... Hori or Hoseidan or something like that. Um, the others were Alps and Mitsumi. Um, and um, in general, uh, the, the H models, uh, I, I mean, I'm just kind of aggregating my knowledge and reading on it, but uh, they were pretty much considered to be the, the, the least reliable of the three manufacturers. Um, in no small part due to this uh, option that they went for to use this flex ribbon cable uh, to make the button connections. Uh, something about the design here has just caused these particular controllers to age out over time. There's something in here that that, that happens that, that causes these connections to um, eventually break down and just stop working. Um, it may have something to do um, with the, uh, the the special feature on these PS2 DualShocks where uh, the harder you press the button, um, the more it will register the button press. It's not just a binary thing where the button is either pressed or not. It's um, a little bit more involved. There weren't even that many games that utilized that feature, um, so it was really just uh, something that was a failure point that didn't add a whole lot of benefit to the whole system at, uh, at large. Um, one example I can give you on that is if you're playing Grand Theft Auto, um, you know, if you're accelerating the vehicle, you know, the harder you press the button down, the faster the vehicle would go. A lot of people didn't even know that that was a case there. But anyway, uh, we're really going off the rails here. That's not the point of the video. Um, the point of the video is how do we repair this? And that means that we're going to have to replace this thing. There is no repairing this ribbon cable. Uh, these little pads, there's just, there's just nothing that you can really do for it. you got to replace it. 
And thankfully, uh, China <laughs> in general is still making these, uh, these, these flex ribbon cables here. Uh, so you can get them from uh, AliExpress. In this case, uh, they're about 30 cents a piece. And as you can see, take one of these out here. Line it up. That's the model number right there. Everything looks like it should. And uh, give me just a moment and we'll uh, proceed with disassembling this further. So let's let's proceed further with breaking this controller down. Take the shoulder the shoulder rubber buttons off, put them in the project box, and I think we can unhook this now. Just just latches on that corner and this latches on that corner. And Let's see here, what am I missing? I don't want to break anything. Oh, there we go. It's just a little bit of friction there in the corner. All right. So now we've got it to the point where it's completely loose, but it's still stuck in there. When we look on the other side, pop everything out. When we look on the other side, <laughs> uh, you'll see that the ribbon cable is attached by crimp, which is super obnoxious, uh, by crimp to this uh, pin connector here to the, to the PCB. So there's not really anything that we can do here other than uh, cut this off because this is all trash now. This this whole area right here is trash. Um, and uh, what we'll do is see if I can get a little closer to the camera. Uh, we'll have to desolder this and uh, replace it with a new connector, which you can get these. You can get these connectors from China on typically like AliExpress uh, for. I don't know if memory serves something like 30 cents a piece. So we'll put a new one on there. And these are pressure fit um, pin connectors. So if we ever have to replace this again, oh no, um, then, you know, it's not something where you have to cut the cable off completely. So again, one day I'll have a better camera, but uh, you have to take my word for it here. Anyway, so let's move forward on this. It feels so wrong cutting it. Ribbon cables are just notoriously difficult to uh, repair and to work with. And you're, you know, in the repair hobby, you know, you go to extra care not to damage ribbon cables because they're such a pain in the butt but um, in this case there's really nothing else that we can do for this it's completely dead so we'll chuck that and uh, we'll work on getting this thing off now this is where things are going to go awry here because I don't have a hot air station yet um, and uh, this this could just be disastrous. Um, but let's see. So I have my soldering iron set to 350 degrees Celsius. Uh, and uh, we're going to see what we can do about getting this bad boy off.
All right, I'm going to pause it while I learn some lessons. Okay, so I had to change tips on the soldering iron. The one I had just wasn't holding the heat that I needed. And, and to be sure, for anyone watching, this is really not the best way to be going about this. Uh, you know, you really want a hot air station for something with this many pins on it. You know, you're, you're going to want a hot air station to pull it off uniformly. Like, I'm really risking ripping some pads up by doing this, but... Um, you know, I'm working with what I got. I need to get some of these videos under my belt and uh, I'm willing to take the criticism so that I can get the learning done. So, onward and upward. All right. So, I'm just applying a generous amount of solder to my, uh, to my tip here to make sure that I'm making good contact. And, boom. We got it loose. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Of course, now these pads are um, really pretty not good. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer for you. Yeah. All right. Let's get this cleaned up a bit. All right. So, got some flux here. I uh, kind of messed up my plunger a little bit, so we'll just be applying it manually and that is probably a gross excess all right we're just cleaning the pads up here um, from that super messy uh, removal in uh, what is Definitely not the recommended way. <laughs> and we looks like we did have a little bit of pads lifting up from that removal, but you know, this is pretty good for the tools I had to work with I think I'm not too unhappy here all right I don't know if I can anyway moving on we've got one of those guys we're going to have to attach. Probably the finest soldering I'll maybe ever be capable of. We got a pad that really wants to lift up. Very unfortunate. I thought I escaped that, but seemingly not.
Let's put a little more flux on there. And keep at it. Very frustrating. But, you know, I got one bridged connection here that we need to sort out. Created another one. All right, folks, I think we got it. Really wish this would focus. All right, let's clean it up. Okay, so what we've got here is some 99, good grief, that light is awful, uh, some 99% IPA, isopropanol, this helps clean electronics if you're not familiar, um, there's no ill effects, but you want to get the, uh, you want to get the flux off, it's a sticky mess, uh, and it's just not something you want hanging around. Actually, I should have started with a little bit of a little bit of toweling down first. All right, let's try this again. I had a lot of flux on there, so I got some cleaning I really got to do now. I don't want any of that stuff hanging around if I can help it. 
by the way, this is a very messy ordeal here. Uh, messier than it should be, but I'm just a little bit new to soldering at that size. So bear with me. Okay. There's nothing stopping us from moving forward with the rest of it here though. So we're going to take the ribbon cable mounted keep them from flopping around any more than they already have beautiful So we got that wire fed and I'm going to take a ribbon cable as you can see you know comes around the front this is where the buttons press right and we're going to need to feed this this connector through that through that hole right there need a little bit of a trim you gotta be really careful here to not sever the known circuit here See if that gets us the room that we need. Persistently too big.
Boy, that's annoying. Sorry, I'm just getting so in, entrenched in getting this thing sized correctly. I forgot I was on video. Well, let's just give it a shot. See, uh, see where that gets us. They both kind of lay down. That might be that might be good enough uh, for our purposes. All right, you can't forget that little corner there, and that little corner there. Everything else is pretty much laying down as expected. And got a ribbon cable through. Seems roughly correct. All right, I'm going to refeed this wire yet again. All right, got that there. And now, let's see here. Need some. Good pliers to get this ribbon cable in. If I was a smarter man, I probably would have done that first. Well, that is looking like it's in.
There we go. For whatever reason, I'm just failing at getting this PCB to sit right. There we go, there we go, there we go. We got it. Okay, where is my screwdriver? All right, great. So let's get one screw. Oh, actually, we got some still in the case, so we'll we'll use those. We don't want to do too much work uh, before testing because there's a very good chance I completely failed at this. So we don't want to put every single screw in there before we have to potentially open it back up again. So anyway, let's all cross our fingers and hope that this was a meaningful repair. All right. All right, we're hooking it back up to the PC. Let's hope for no smoke or fires, huh? Analog button works. Up, oh, analog still work. Of course, those were not the problem in the first place. All four, all four buttons work here. R1 and R2, those were fine. Yes, the L buttons work now. And up, down, left, right on the D-pad. Start and s select. Well, yeah, there we go, there's start. I think that, that start button is a little iffy there, but um, it'll probably get better once we uh, button it all up a, a little bit. A little bit better here. I do st still see this um, problem with the case here. I don't know. I'll have to open it. I'll open it back up and take a look at it to see if this is a, a case problem, like a manufacturing defect or, or what, but um, that may be causing some of the start and select pain. Um, but all the buttons work. Thrilled. How about that? I'm going to call it a fix. We still got some polishing to do, but um, I am thrilled. I am just thrilled for the cost of, you know, if you have the tools, if you have a soldering iron, you have um, tiny screwdrivers and pliers and IPA and old toothbrushes um, and whatnot. Um, I mean, you can take 
a vintage controller that's not being made anymore and would have otherwise been chucked in the garbage um, and get it back up and working for you know a buck fifty at most with the uh, you know materials and um, you know solder and and whatnot I mean this is just great so okay I'm gonna end it here and uh, we'll get these videos far more polished with better equipment uh, over time and uh, hopefully with some more interesting content but fair warning I have a whole lot of these controllers and I'll probably be filming a lot of them. <laughs> so, all right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.